All right, hello everybody, and I appreciate you coming to my session. I know that uh, you have a lot of different choices on what to do, so I appreciate you coming here. Uh, today, I'm gonna be talking about my experience building and maintaining a B-Stand with certified components. So the agenda for today is I'm gonna talk a little bit about me, uh, why we chose V-SAN, my preparation for building, uh, preparation uh, and then building V-SAN, maintaining it in a few minutes maybe for some Q&A. Uh, so a little bit about me, you know, I'm gonna go all, over all this, but I am on social media and uh, there's my Twitter handle. I work for NJVC as a systems engineer, been there about eight years. Um, I'm the St. Louis VMUG leader, been doing that for about a little over five years. Um, I have a lot of cert certifications. I got my cert for cert first certification back in 98, and uh, I have three patents, but they're nothing to do with virtualization. So if you wanna talk about those later, just come and find me. So one day uh, my boss said, hey, uh, I need you to come in my office and talk about something. And so I sat down and he said, um, yeah, we lost this big government contract that we had, and uh, most of the uh, equipment that we have was tied to that contract, and we have to turn it back in. And I said, okay, I said, well, do we have a budget to replace all this, and maybe six to eight months to do all this? He's like, no, we don't have any budget, and we have to do this in like a month. And, uh, and he's sitting there like everything's fine, and, and I'm just like, I can see the building's getting ready to burn down. So, um, so, so after I got that image out of my head and calmed down a little bit, then we decided uh, that we had to basically discuss these main four things. We had to uh, talk about budget, uh, requirements, constraints, and risks. And so uh, because basically we didn't have any budget, um, we had lots of constraints and, uh, and, and uh, some risks, um, it come down to basically um, vSAN was sort of our, our number one choice. We really didn't have a, a, a big budget to go out and, and purchase a huge SAN. Um, and so uh, one of the main reasons that we chose vSAN was we already had a bunch of servers that we didn't have to turn back in to the government um, that were not being used for anything else. And they had a lot of RAM in them. And so, uh, this was one reason that we chose vSAN. Another reason that we chose vSAN was we already, we had an ELA and we had some vSAN licenses that we could use. And so we didn't have to go out and purchase vSAN licenses. And so we had servers, some equipment, and we had the licenses. And so that helped us make that decision to use vSAN much easier. Um, it would have been easy if we had the budget and we could just went out and purchase VX Rail or a, a, a v, v Ready Node solution, uh, but we didn't have that. we didn't have that option. We had very little budget to work with, so um, th this was sort of a no-brainer. And so once once I made that decision that uh, we were going to use vSAN and and we started heading down that path, uh, a couple of things I had done was. Uh, read as much as I could. And, and luckily, I had already been reading some of these uh, materials already. Um, if you uh, haven't been reading anything on vSAN yet, these are two very good books uh, to, to go out and start reading. Um, and this is a, a website that somebody put together uh, that's got a whole list of all kinds of vSAN resources that you can go out and look at. Um, obviously, I didn't put if you scroll down in this list a little bit, there's all kinds of documentation and resources. Um, if, you're, if you're thinking about building vSAN, this is one you definitely need to go and look at. So once we decided that uh, we were ready to, to start building that vSAN, uh, one of the first things that we looked at was the licensing that we had. Um, because ESX licenses are different than vSAN licenses. And even though we had some vSAN licenses already, uh, we had to look at what the differences were between uh, the different uh, tiers of licenses. So we had the standard licenses already, and I really wanted to do erasure coding. So if you look down in this chart up here, um, erasure coding is not in that standard license. So we went out to our TAM and, and looked about how much it would cost us to upgrade to that advanced license, and it just wasn't in our budget. And so that was one of the constraints that we had. So we, we had to stick with non-erasure coding. 
Um, so it was something that we had to plan for when I was thinking about how many SSDs we needed to buy and, and how many servers we actually needed uh, for our environment. So one of the things, if you're thinking about building vSAN, definitely look at what license can you, you can afford and what features you really want. Because uh, obviously they all, all the licenses don't have all the features. So once we figured out what licenses we, uh, we, we had to work with, uh, the next thing I had to do was figure out um, the servers that we already had, the, the, hard, the controller that was in them was not compatible with vSAN. So we had to go out and purchase controllers, and then we had to figure out which uh, hard drives were comp compatible with vSAN. So the way we did that was you go to the uh, VMware uh, HCL website, and then on the HCL website, there's a link in there to go to vSAN. And so you just select that link and that'll take you to the vSAN HCL. Because there, um, until I started getting deeper into vSAN, I just thought that if my equipment was compatible with the ESX HCL, um, that, we, that we were all good, everything would work fine. But um, that's, that's not true. So you have to make sure that um, all your hardware is compatible on the HCL list before, before you start um, going down that path. And a lot of people say, well, um, even though it's not in the HCL, I can still get it working. And that may be true. You might be able to get it wor working, but um, your health checks are not going to pass. And then if you have an issue and you call support, you're probably not going to get support either. So um, it's best to just make sure that the hardware that you use is on the HCL. So once you get to the vSAN HCL page, um, um, I really hate this page, but you have to use it. And it, it, one of the reasons I hate it is that if you're using, or if you're gonna build your own vSAN, um, you have to find down in that real small print down there where that green arrow is, that's the link that you need to click on if you're gonna build your own vSAN. So this page is really designed if you're gonna buy a ready node or, or a VxRail, that type of thing. So you, you have to scroll down to that green arrow if you're gonna do build your own vSAN. So once you click on that link, then it'll take you to this page. And the three main components that you need to make sure that are compatible uh, with the vSAN link are your controllers and your uh, spinning disks and SSDs. And so uh, we, they, we made the decision that we were gonna build an all flash uh, vSAN. Luckily, we did have the budget to do that. Um, so if you, are, if you have your uh, hardware and it's online already, um, this is a tool that will help you determine if your hardware is compatible uh, with, with vSAN already. So you can just load this up, it's a command line tool, and it will tell you if it's compatible or not. Um, but unfortunately, uh, because of the time constraint that I had, um, I didn't have time to get the servers all online and load this tool. And so I, I did the work uh, manually already, but this is a good tool that will, that will help you um, sort of automate that process. I, I'm sorry, very hard to... No, I don't think it does. Yeah, sure. So um, this is the uh, controller that we end up using. Uh, the SAS 9361. There were some other controllers that um, our VMware TAM had sort of recommended, uh, but when we worked with our local Dell rep, he told us that they were they were not supported in the configuration that we were trying to use. So um, after a lot of research and uh, and talking with different people and checking the HCL, we determined that um, this card uh, was the one that we were going to use. And when you're looking at choosing uh, different controller cards. You want to make sure that um, they support pass-through because uh, you're not going to use any RAID 5, RAID 6, anything like that. They have to support pass-through and uh, you want to look at queue depth. So those are the two main things you want to look at when you're trying to determine what controller card you're going to use for vSAN if you're going to build your own. Correct. You also, yeah, you also have to worry about if you're going to do an all-flash array or a... Um, or a hybrid, and when you're on the HCL, that 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 will, um, if your controller is is on the HCL, it'll tell you that in the uh, in the information. 
So these were the SSDs that we chose. Um, you know, we did have the budget to do an all flash, but these are not the um, fastest enterprise SSDs. So these were really the ones that we could afford. And um, we, uh, one of these are for the 480 gig we chose for the uh, cache, and then the uh, 960 gig was for the data. And so you have to make sure that the ones that you choose uh, uh, for cache are uh, on the ACL for cache, and then the other ones are compatible with data, because not all the drives are compatible with both. So you want to make sure that the ones that you choose are compatible with what you're going to use them for. So once we had all the hardware, we had all the controllers and the drives, uh, and I got everything rack, uh, put in the servers and all racked online. I got ESXi loaded up and, uh, and got it all, all um, in vCenter and everything like that. I thought I was ready to go. I, I thought I could just run and, and start make uh, data stores and, and everything like that. Well, that's not really the first process that you should start doing. You want to make sure that vSAN is healthy, that you have all the um, all your drivers that are correct, uh, and it basically tells you that your hardware is correct and, and everything, and you'll see um, on this next slide right here. Basically, you want to make sure that everything is green, that it says the vSAN configuration is correct, that all your hardware is good, and all your cluster is good. And then basically once you uh, see that the hardware's uh, passed all the checks and everything, then you start ready, ready to start doing some more of that configuration. And this, this is another screen that shows you basically you've got it all configured correctly and you're, you're ready to start making that data store that you can, so you can start putting things on it. And then this, this is a different check. This is, this is in the, um, uh, this was the 6.5, I think, non-U2 version. In the U2 version, uh, th the screen was a little bit different. So after we got it all configured and we uh, were, were confident that everything was all healthy, the next thing I did was I configured every alert that there was for vSAN because I, I wanted to make sure that if something happened, I was going to get an alert for it. So I went through all the alerts that were and I configured every one of them. So after we had it all built and we were uh, fairly confident that it was configured correctly and we thought we were ready to start putting data on it, um, one of the tools that I wanted to use was ACI Bench so that we could do a little bit of stress testing with it and uh, making sure that it was going to be production ready. But unfortunately, because of the time constraints that we had, um, I was not able to use this tool. So, but if you are thinking of building one on your own, this is a good tool to use. It's a Fling. Just go to the Fling website, download it, and you can run that and test it out. So, um, once we had it all built and we, we were co fairly confident that it was ready to go and start moving production data to it, um, we basically uh, had the servers uh, from our old cluster and then we had a new cluster, uh, uh, the, the vSAN cluster. Basically, I just selected the VMs from the, from the old cluster and uh, did a migra uh, storage migration from the old cluster to the new cluster. And luckily, we had a 40 gig backbone and uh, so we weren't, we weren't worried about bandwidth. And I didn't select uh, a bunch at a time. I just started with a, like maybe 10 or 15 VMs and might start migrating them over. But one thing you'll have to watch is that if, if you can see up there um, on the right-hand side, there's two, two little triangles that was telling us that, um, that there's a warning up there. Basically, when we started migrating a whole bunch of data over to it, um, it had to replicate all that data over. And so that's what that warning was telling us, that um, it was replicating, uh, um, oh, what's the right word? Basically, it was putting multiple copies on different servers, and it was migrate, trying to migrate all that data to different servers. So it took us, um, I think it took us about four or five days to migrate everything off of our old cluster Onto, onto the vSAN cluster. So um, I would continually watch this while I was migrating data to make sure that I wasn't migrating too much data at one time and I would give it some time for it to replicate out all that different data. 
And so one of the things you can do is, um, while I was replicating that data, um, you could come into this screen here and you could see uh, what data on, on what server was being replicated. That way you didn't, you didn't have to just sort of guess on how long it was gonna take for that replication to happen. This, you come in here and it'll show you exactly what it's doing. Um, so once we had all the data um, uh, migrated and we were uh, ready to shut down those old servers, um, we were, it was running really well and we were really happy with it. And then um, initially we were on 6.5 and uh, U1 came out. And so we were, we were ready to basically uh, to patch it up to U1. And so um, I, I wasn't real confident on my, on my own to actually uh, do that myself. So I opened up a ticket with VMware and uh, they talked to me some uh, steps that we needed to plan to make sure that on how we can uh, patch the servers to make sure that there was no data loss. And one of the things that they told me was that you want to make sure that uh, when we put the host in a maintenance mode, these are the three options. And um, we chose the full data migration mode, mainly because that um, if something happened during the, uh, the patching or the upgrade and this host doesn't come back online, all that data is uh, already migrated off and we won't lose any data. So um, if you're just doing a simple reboot, you, you can choose uh, one of these other options. Um, but if you're going to do an upgrade or a patch or whatever, you want to make sure that you're going to migrate all that data off. That way you don't lose any data. Um, so um, I've given this presentation at a couple other VMUGs before. And one of the questions that, that I usually get is, um, if I had to do this all over again, would, would I choose vSAN? And yes, I would definitely choose vSAN. Um, but if I had the budget, um, I would love to uh, buy VxRail or a vSAN ready node. But if you don't have the budget, I mean, it's definitely, uh, definitely something you can do to build it on your own. Uh, any other questions? Uh, um, no, I, I th I'm pretty sure that the last time we did a uh, we we did a U.2 and we did the migration, um, it only took us up a couple hours to migrate all our data off. Um, I mean, we we're uh, we only have about 16 terabytes of data. And so, um, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that is. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, we're not doing any um, stretch clustering or anything like that. All of our hosts are in the, in the same data center, so, and luckily we have a 40 gig backbone, so we don't, we don't have any issues with bandwidth or anything like that. Um, what, what type of backbone do you have? What's that? Oh, okay. It, it's, it, hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'd be interested in to see some of the details. Um, yeah, that's that's something we're always concerned about when we do a um, a patch or an upgrade to make to make sure everything's all compatible. But. Um, we, we have some other tools that we use uh, to run afterwards to make sure that they are all compatible. Um, and we run that tool periodically. Um, it's a third party tool that we use, but uh, yeah, RuneCast, um, they're, they're in the solutions exchange and they just released their version 3.0 tool. But yeah, we, we, uh, it's, it's definitely something that we're always concerned about so to make sure all, all hosts are 100% the same. Uh, 
Um, no, um, luckily not. I, I mean, I, I was just worried that the hardware um, was uh, basically going to work like I thought it would. And uh, uh, I, I guess there was one surprise. Um, those two warnings that I got when I started moving data over, um, I didn't realize it was going to take as long as it was to replicate some of that all, to, to all the other hosts. So that was really, I guess, the only surprise. Um, I knew it was going to take uh, take a while, but I didn't realize I was going to get that little triangle. But I, I mean, other than that, I, I was happy with it, and I was happy that it only took us about four or five days to get everything off of it. So, yeah. And luck, luckily, we met our deadline to uh, um, shut down our old equipment and get it turned back into the government. So, yeah. Uh, it's been it. Uh, a little over two years now that we've had it up and going and and we're looking at a hardware refresh right now but um, because of the uh, environment that I work in we have we don't have a lot of budget and so we're hoping we get some fallout money at the end of the year to possibly buy a ready node or even a VX rail would be awesome No, we are not doing encryption. Uh, we've talked about it, but um, it just it's not a requirement for us. And so because of some of the um, performance uh, that, it, that, it, uh, that comes with it, yeah, we just decided not to do it. And some of the complexity is also. What's that? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, I, and I've heard some other things are coming down the pipeline with the key management stuff and encryption that might make it easier, so... Exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, restores, yeah, it can be tricky. Yes. 